Hello and welcome to another edition of the Invest in GH webinar series. I'm your host, Prince Henry Dankwa. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, Invest in GH is the leading provider of financial news and education in Ghana. Our news, magazines, and our webinars have been delivered to thousands of people in Ghana and beyond. And we'd like to thank you for joining us today. And for those of you who are cherished subscribers, we thank you for joining us once again for today's webinar. Our webinar is sponsored by SIC Brokerage Limited. SIC Brokerage is a leading investment bank and brokerage firm in Ghana with over 25 years combined experience in stockbroking and investment advisory. You can contact SIC Brokerage for your sales and trading of stocks, bonds, and treasury bills. <clears throat> you can also visit their website at www.sicbrokerage.com. Over the past few months, we've organized webinars that have covered topics in investment in mutual funds, stocks, cryptocurrencies, and real estate. We've also discussed how to grow wealth and achieve financial independence. You can find our previous webinars on our YouTube channel, Invest in GH. Invest in GH on YouTube. Can you do well to like and subscribe our videos when you watch them? and recommend them to your friends to watch as well. Okay, so today we'll be discussing how to buy bonds in Ghana. How to buy bonds in Ghana. And to take us through this discussion, we have our speaker in the person of Mr. Seth Ofori. Mr. Seth Ofori is our speaker for today. Mr. Ofori, can you hear me? Certainly. Okay. All right, for those of you who do not know Mr. Ofori, let me introduce him to you briefly. He has years of experience in investment banking and he's currently the general manager of SRC, SIC, I don't know why I keep saying SRC, <laughs> SIC Brokerage Limited. Prior to joining the SIC Financial Services, Mr. Ofori was an associate vice president of IC Securities Ghana Limited and has previously worked with SDC Brokerage Services as an authorized dealing officer. He holds an MBA in Banking and Finance from the Paris Graduate School of Management in France and a BSc Administration degree. Okay, a BSc Banking and Finance option from the University of Ghana, Lagon. He's also a licensed dealing officer by the Stock Exchange of Ghana. Mr. Ofori, you are welcome. Thank you. All right. So what I'll do is that I'll leave you to teach us how we can trade bonds in Ghana. And then when you are done, we'll come back and then respond to a few questions from the audience. Thank you, Prince. It's a delight to be on, on the call with, with everybody this evening. And um, I'm, I'm glad to be doing this because it's my passion um, to help people to be able to put something aside for future use. And so I always cherish opportunities of this nature to be able to share um, the little experience I have in the, in the profession. Indeed, a lot of people find it very difficult to put money aside whilst they are working and generating income. But again, um, even the good book, uh, I found a few verses that uh, allude to the fact that whilst working or whilst times are good, it's always prudent to put something aside so that in difficult times, you can lay hands on those savings and be able to sort yourself out. So uh, somewhere in the Bible, uh, it was said that uh, a lazy person who perhaps doesn't want to do any work in order to amount anything for himself, for uh, him to use in difficult times, should go to the ant and see its ways and become wise. Although, according to the Bible, the ant has no commander, officer or ruler, it prepares its food. Even in the summer, it has gathered its food supplies 
even in the harvest. So if you can find this in Proverbs chapter 6, verse, uh, verses 6 to 8. Again, you could also find in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, that there is an appointed time for everything. And so there's a time for every activity under the heavens. There's a time for birth and there's a time for die. There's a time to die. And there's a time to plant and there's a time to uproot what was planted. So indeed, there is time for us to be able to put something aside. So when times are no longer um, conducive or times are hard, then we could lay hands on things that we put aside. Is the reason why today we are here talking about how to trade in bonds, because we can do savings in bonds. Now, we find bonds on the financial markets, and financial markets generally are segregated into two. So we have the money markets and we have the, the capital market. And bonds finds itself in one of the uh, segregated size of the financial market. So it falls under the category of a fixed income product. I'll break these things down. And indeed, we try to, to speak plain language so that um, for majority of us to benefit because we want the webinar to benefit all of us so that after it, then we can go into action. Now, there are a few instruments or there are instruments in all these categories of, of, of the market. So under the financial market, we have the money market, we have the capital market. And in the money market, there are certain instruments. For instance, you have your treasury bills, we have the commercial papers, we have the bankers' acceptances, we have repurchase agreements, you have certificates of deposits, we have money market collective investment schemes, those instruments that we popularly call mutual funds and unit trusts and also discount notes. These are often traded on the money market. When you go to the capital market, mostly when we talk about capital market, what comes to our mind, especially in this segment or this um, jurisdiction, we often talk think about shares or stocks, but there are other instruments that are also traded on the capital market. We have the treasury notes or bonds. We have the corporate notes or corporate bonds. We have the mortgage-backed securities. We have fixed income mutual funds. And we also have municipal bonds. So you see, even mutual funds and unit trusts, in some jurisdictions, we have them listed on the capital market. And when we talk about the capital market, we are talking about the stock market. So today, we are talking about, about bonds. And in Ghana, Gone are the days when, uh, when we talk about trading of bonds, then we think that it's the preserve of the banks. But elsewhere or in other jurisdictions, it's rather the preserve of the capital market. But it's rather the other way in, in, in Ghana. But thank God, now capital market is taking over the bonds market. So it's no longer a preserve of the banks. So you find bonds listed on the stock exchange and you have brokerage firms such as SIC brokerage trading or playing a significant role on the bonds market. Now, bonds are fixed income securities. And bonds are um, what we call publicly traded debt instruments. So they are liability. And you know, we call them fixed income because most of all all segments of the of the fees of the instruments are, are fixed. Now the income that you generate on the instrument is fixed. So you have your interest predetermined and it is fixed. So because you, you the pre the you at the onset of your investment, the interest that you are going to earn on your principal investment is already fixed, it's predetermined, so you know. Now, the one you are giving your money to, the borrower agrees to pay you your fixed income or your fixed amount of money 
together with the interest. So your interest is fixed. The principal amount that you recoup at the maturity or at the end of the period that you the, the lender or the borrower um, accepts to keep your money is also fixed. So the amount that you are placing or you are investing is fixed. And that is what you are going to collect at the end of, of its maturity or at the end of the tenor. So your amount, your principal is fixed at the end of the period. And the period itself is also fixed. And the return, the interest that you are going to receive at the end of the investment is also predetermined. It's also fixed. That is the reason why we call it fixed income security. So the return that you're making, the income is actually a fixed one and all the other things uh, are fixed. They are not um, things that you, you, you that will surprise you one day. You already know what they are. Now, the one who is giving out the money is the investor. And the one who is receiving the money from you, the one who you are investing the money with, or the one whose company you are investing the money in becomes the issuer. So in bonds, we have the issuer and then we have the investor. So the investor is you, you the one who is placing the money and the issuer of the instrument, the bond, is the one who is going to receive your money and make use of it. So he's accepting to use your money for a specific period of time, pay you the principal plus the interest that he promises to pay. So in summary, bonds are a way, you know, for organizations to raise money. They want money to use. And so the paper that they are giving out, the instrument that they are giving out is, is the bond that they are giving you, you know, to have your money and agree on all the other terms. Let's make an example to try and break this one, this issue down further. We are assuming that your, your town wants to put up some facilities, let's say a hospital or a market, and they, 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 want, they are looking for money. So they approach you because you have some money to spare. They ask you to at least, you know, release that money and you will call it an investment. And so they promise to take this money, make use of it, pay it back, plus some interest. When at a specified period of time, and so, the paper they give you, well, under normal circumstances, when you give out your money, you expect to receive a receipt. All right. But this one, we are giving a, a different description. We are saying that the, the document is a bond. So these are the features of a bond. And again, there are certain terms that sometimes could be confusing that we use when we are talking about bonds. We talk, we talk about the coupon. We talk about the yield. We talk about principal. And then you hear something like face value, you have um, a power value, you have a maturity date, and then you hear something about rating. Well, these things, we want to de demystify them today so that when you talk about bonds, you don't um, feel that it's just uh, something that a few people, a few privileged people should benefit from or should use. It's everybody can, can be part of bond trading. When we talk about coupon, coupon is actually the interest that you'll be receiving on your bond or your, on your investment periodically. We are saying periodically because the interest is predetermined. So every year you are expected to be paid something on your investment, some part of your interest to be coming to you every year. And normally, it is split into two. Each year, you have half of it in, in half of the year, and then the other half at the end of the year. So you'll be receiving the coupon payments every uh, semi or every half year. And then, so every six months, you are expected to be having part of your interest until the final payment of your principal together with the last payment of interest. So the interest that will be coming to you every six months is what we term as a coupon. As for the principal amount, is, the, is what we call, again, face value or the par value. The principal amount 
that you are putting in. Then the maturity date is the end of the investment. The, the date, the last day that you, you want to receive the rest of your money, you know, that's principal plus interest. That is the maturity date. After that maturity, you are expected to have everything back in your account. And the rating is also to test the, the credit quality of the instrument that we are holding to see if it's, it's worth, um, it's credit ready, that's all. So you have agencies that are rating agen agencies that put your, your bond instrument to test to see if it's, it has good cre credit. So these things do not happen in a vacuum because um, there must be players, you know, as far as bonds are concerned. So, you know, it's like um, a demand and supply situation where you have somebody in the middle trying to put the two together. That person in the middle is what is playing an intermediary role. And that's where the brokers come in. So a government or a municipal assembly or a, an institution, a corporate institution is looking for money. So that's where the demand comes in. So they demand the money you are holding. And there's somebody somewhere who has the money to supply. So the broker or the intermediary is now bringing demand and supply of money together. So the government institution or the, co the corporate, private corporate institution or municipal assembly who is in need of money for some infrastructure projects approaches a broker or a adv financial advisor to look for people who are willing to part with money, you know, to invest the money. So you have the issuer, that's the, the demand side of the situation. Then the intermediary, the broker, that's where we come in. Then the investor, that is where you come in. These parties come together to form a, a, an issuing cycle. You know, the group that will ensure that a bond is issued and money is exchanged, then all the other issues trigger in. So these are, that's how the structure would look like. Now, if you come in to give out your money, then you become a bondholder. And as a bondholder, you might want to know what rights and responsibilities that you have. Now, when you are a bondholder, you are not an owner of the institution that is using your money. The institution that you have given your money to, the, the, the fact that you have given out money does not give you, give you an, ownership, um, an ownership right. And so if it's government that has taken your money in terms of a bond, you do not own the project that government is going to use your money to develop. So you do not have ownership rights. You are a creditor. You are not an owner. Then you also, at the end of um, each six months, you take your, your coupon. And then at the end of the tenor, you take your principal. So you receive your coupons plus your principal, and that ends the relationship. You walk away. So you are not expected to be invited to any meeting to come and discuss how the, the company or the project or the institution is being run, no. So there's nothing like I'm not general meeting for you. You do not have a say in the running of the institution. So you do not have a voting right. And so you don't expect to receive what we call dividend. What will come to you is part of your interest that we call coupon. So in the world of bonds, we do not talk about dividend because owners of companies who receive dividend. And once you are just a creditor who will take your money one day and walk away, you don't expect to receive what we call dividend. Now, the bonds market is heavily regulated. Bonds market is heavily regulated. In Ghana, the banks trade in bonds. And we know that the banks are regulated heavily by the central bank. Now we have what we call the Ghana fixed income market. Is the fixed income 
trading segment of the Ghana Stock Exchange. So it's currently a department under the Ghana Stock Exchange. And so they also ensure that every player on that on the on that market is is ensures that it's, it's doing the right thing. So they ensure some um decency in that market. The stock exchange has oversight. Then the stock exchange itself is regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission. So by extension, the Securities and Exchange Commission is regulating the bonds market. So we have our rules that we apply, that apply to the market, and we, we obey those rules. And SEC ensures that all the market players in the fixed income market, as far as bonds trading is concerned, comply with all these rules and regulations. Now the question is, why are we talking about bonds to you this evening? Why are we encouraging you to buy bonds? Because they are safe. Because they are safe. And that is one heavy advantage when you buy bonds. Now, when you buy bonds, you realize that the bonds market or the bonds, the bond pricing does not fluctuate as much as um, the stock, stock prices would, would do. So you, you don't see a lot of fluctuations on, on bonds prices. And also your income is guaranteed. Every half year, you are receiving your coupon. So you have a guaranteed income stream that is coming to you periodically. So twice a year, you have your coupon hitting your bank account. And it gives you a, a diversified portfolio because you could have you know, in, investments in other, other segments of the market. So the bonds market or bonds trading also comes in handy to give you some diversification on your investment portfolio. And it's also on, on um, the going to Ghana bonds, you have what we call um, a tax-free income. Indeed, we, we don't, in Ghana, uh, cut up um, what we called um, capital gains tax has been suspended. So if you make gains or capital gains on your bonds, you, you don't pay tax, it's, it's tax free. It's an advantage too. And you know, in investment, we say that the higher the, the returns, the bigger the risk. And on the bonds market, incomes are not overly high. And so, the risks there are relatively low. And transaction fees are also extremely low. So these are um, the reasons why we are saying that take advantage and come and invest in some bonds. When you buy bonds, you have two main income streams. You have your coupon income, and then you also, which is the interest payment that you'll be receiving. And also you can enjoy some capital gain, which is the, um, when you sell your bonds at a premium, you, you benefit from some capital gain, which will give you uh, more than what your initial investment is. And, and bonds are as good as cash because uh, thankfully we have a secondary market. So where you want to exit, there is, there is a free exit. You could easily um, cash out your instrument and walk away if you don't, if you don't want to wait to maturity. So again, it's as good as cash and it's every you get good returns. Now, the bond prices to, um, we, we want to talk about them. You know, like I said, it's not something that fluctuates and um, it's, you, you have um, those interests, you know, coming to you periodically. And what happens on the interest, or I should say on the money market, as far as the interest regime, interest regime is concerned is that when you see interest rates going down, the bonds, bonds prices rather go up. And so that's the reaction that, um, that's how bonds behave. If you see interest rates going down in the, in the system, then you see bond prices rather go in the opposite direction. And so you could also end up selling your bonds at a higher value than waiting 
to maturity. That is what we describe as you selling your bonds at a premium. You could also end up selling at a discount, though, because where you want to exit before the maturity, you could re sell your bond at a, at a discount in order to make it attractive for somebody else to take over. You know, so you, you have your credit instrument, you are not able to wait till maturity, maybe you are pressed due to some need of money. And so you want to sell your instrument before maturity and you want to make it attractive for somebody to buy. So you want to, you know, drop the price a bit, thereby selling it at a discount. That way you could exit the market as quickly as you want. And at the same time, the opposite is also uh, goes to benefit you if you end up selling it at a premium. Now, how do you buy bonds in case you want to buy bonds? The bonds are actually traded over the counter. Some are listed. So they are traded on the Ghana Fees Income Market or the Ghana Stock Exchange. So those ones are traded uh, on the counter. But a good amount of, or a significant amount of bonds are also traded over the counter. So you have these markets available or at your disposal, you can always um, trade these bonds. Once you are able to exit, offering your bond for somebody to buy, at the same time, you could also take advantage of the market to buy somebody's bond, somebody who could also not wait to maturity, you could also end up buying those bonds at a discount thereby giving you some additional income. So you buy those bonds at a discount and expect to sell them for profit. So you want to sell them at a premium together with all the future coupons that will come your way. So those are some of the benefits that you can derive when you buy the bonds. Now, if you want to buy the bonds, you see us, there are a couple of forms you will make you complete. And then you add your, um, we'll do what we, we call KYC. We will take you through the KYC process, take your ID, your passport picture, and um, then you make your money available and we do it. So if you have a corporate institution and you want to buy some bonds in the name of the corporate institution to, who, there are a few things we'll ask you to provide so as for us to be able to uh, buy the bonds for you. And at the same time, if you are on, on this call and you have an institution, and you are thinking of issuing a bond, we can also help you to raise some bonds and um, make some or make use of some money. Now, I did mention that um, transaction fee on the bonds market is relatively low. What we do or the charges are 0.05%. You know, so if you have a thousand Ghana cities, let's say the thousand Ghana cities being the minimum amount that you can place on the bonds market. When we do the transaction, we only charge you 0.05%, which is 50 pesos. Okay, so it's so attractive and we are appealing to you to try and, and be part of this board. Now, um, whatever we do, we want to find out what the advantages and the disadvantages are. So on the bonds market, to having spoken about all the issues about it, you might want to know some disadvantages and also advantages that come with, with bonds trading. Now, there's something we call interest rate risk. What it means is that the once interest rates are changing in the system, it affects your the value of your bond. I did mention that when interest rates are appreciating, bond prices fall, and the vice versa also holds. Now, another risk is a purchasing power risk. When you buy bonds, you expect that you, you should be better off. Once you do investment, you want to be better off. But inflation also affects every investment that we do. So if the rate of inflation is higher than the gains you are making on your bonds is a loss to you. So then you have a purchasing power uh, risk. So what we expect 
you you to to have is that the returns that you are making on your bonds should be uh, way above the inflationary rate. That is when you are making a real you know returns on your investment, so that then the you avoid the risk of losing uh, part of your or value of your bond to inflation. Now, there's something we also call default risk. Well, there's risk in everything that we do in this world. And so you buy a bond and you, are, you could be, or you could entertain some fear that what if this money doesn't come back? It's a legitimate fear. And that is what we call default risk. If the borrower or the issuer defaults in interest payment or principal pay payment, it's a risk. We hope it doesn't happen anyway. But again, there's a reason why the market is, is, heavily, is heavily regulated. Now, there's something we also call liquidity risk. A liquidity risk comes in where, let's say you have the bond, and for some reason, you want to sell out before your maturity, and you are not able to find a buyer. Well, we have a sec an active secondary market in Ghana, so it doesn't happen. But again, it's a risk to you as an investor. Then there's something we also call reinvestment risk. And the reinvestment risk is where, let's say you, you are able to find a juicy bond, and now that that bond has matured and you have your money, you are finding it difficult to find another juicy one to buy. So you'll be wishing that your investments, you know, last a bit longer. So as for you to continue enjoying the juicy side of, of whatever is coming to you. So it's a risk that, well, one, once the juicy one ends, chances are you might not find another one. Uh, so it's a risk. Okay. Then also, um, the, the prices could fall. We, we have already spoken about that. Now, these are the disadvantages. And again, we try to work against these ones for you to enjoy trading in bonds. Now, what are the advantages? The bonds market is really less volatile. So that, that's the reason why you don't see a lot of, um, a lot of fluctuation. Now, we know the stock market is, can be quite vol vol um, volatile sometimes. It's the reason why sometimes uh, you see prices dropping and people losing part of their capital gains. But bonds market do not often behave that way. So it's an advantage over, let's say, the stock market. When you also hold your bonds to maturity, then you have a stable and consistent inflow of cash, you know, and it comes in um, consistently at a specified time. Now, the interest rates on your bonds also, um, when interest rates are also uh, going uh, low on the market, then you expect to have appreciation on, on, your, on the value of your bond. And bonds also come with high liquidity so that when you want to exit the market, you could quickly turn it around and have your cash. So these are, um, and you see that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, which is a good thing. Now, I told you that we could help you either way. If you want to issue bonds, we can help you. And if you want to buy bonds, we can also help you. If you have bonds you want to trade in and you want advice, we are there to help you. I work for SIC Brokerage, and SIC Brokerage is a licensed dealing member of the Ghana Stock Exchange. And so we trade on the stock exchange, and we are licensed and regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission of Ghana. And we, we trade in stocks or company shares listed on the stock exchange, and we could also trade in those that are not listed. We trade them over the counter. And like, like by now, you've already known that we also trade in bonds. We have a research unit and a very vibrant one. And so we are able to do research into some of these um, instruments and also we do economic research. So we are well placed to advise you. So we have an advisory desk and we also have a corporate finance uh, capability. So we are able to do all these things. So ladies and gentlemen on the call, uh, I, this is the end of my presentation.
and I'll be happy to share um, our contact details with you. So if you have issues that we are not able to address now, you could contact us later and we'll try to address those issues. I thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Ofori. Um, very precise, straight to the point, easy to understand presentation from you. Um, we have a few questions here, but before we dive into that, a few announcements. This webinar is streaming live on our YouTube channel, Invest in GH. So if you know someone who is unable to join us via Zoom, kindly send the YouTube link to the person. The YouTube link will be made available in the chat section very soon for those of you who can't find it. Also, we have representatives from SIC Brokerage who will be standing by to respond to a few of your questions if you have any for them. Um, okay, that will be it. Okay, so Mr. Furry, a few questions here. The first one from Joseph. He's asking, how are bonds different from shares? All right. Um, bonds are significantly different from shares because, like I did say, if you are a bondholder, you are not a, you are not, it doesn't give you ownership rights to a company. But if you, are, you own shares, you are a part owner of the company. So you have a say in the company. You are invited to annual meetings. You are paid dividend when the company declares dividend out of the profit that it make over the period. And so you, you, you have um, a contribution to make in, in the company. When they invite you to annual meetings, you are free to express your opinions and, um, and, and share whatever you want to express. But bonds do not, if you are a bondholder, you don't have those privileges. You are a, a creditor to the institution or the issuer. So at the end of the tenor, you take your money and walk away. For shares, unless you sell out, you continue to be a part owner of the company. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ofori. Another question from Badmos. What is the clear distinction between bonds and loans? Okay, so uh, Kofi is always Kofi and Ama is also Ama. If they are mm -hmm. a loan, we, we, define, we define it as a loan and it has the attributes of a loan. You enter into a gentleman agreement with whoever has borrowed that money from you. Now, um, bonds are kind of a specialized or a special form of a loan. If somebody takes a bond from a loan from you, sometimes you could even allow the person to go and use it for free. That's what I'm saying that it depends on the agreement, the terms and conditions that you have with the one who you have given your money or you've you lent the money to. But bonds will typically come with a, a, a specific amount of um, or, or interest, you know, that you'll be you'll be uh, receiving part of every six months and at the end of the tenor, which could be two years or a year, two years or three years, then you have your principal payment together with your, your interest, or the final payment of your interest. So um, you could say that, well, they all have some similarities, but one is a loan and one is a bond. You don't call both of them loans, although they have similar features. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so the viewers are asking if there is a presentation attached to this in the form of a document that can be sent to them. Well, this is a webinar and yeah. it's, we, we, we have not uh, promised to send out instruments, um, documents because we know that People on the call who are interested in the topic will contact us in the offices, in our office, where we can share or throw more light into the discussion. So that's the reason why we are making our contacts available for them to contact us later, rather than taking the material. This is not a classroom. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Well noted. It's just a tradition that we send out these documents for others to revise when they watch the video, but it's fine. 
So we'll make the contact details of SIC Brokerage available to all of you so that those who want to get in touch with them can contact them after the webinar. Okay. Um, Kay is asking, can you kindly explain the yield part for us? Well, the yield measures the um, the, um, the interest, the, the interest per annum of the bond. So it, the yield is a measure of, of the, um, the interest, you know, that you expect to have per, per annum on the bond. Okay. Thank you very much. Someone is also asking, um, Henry wants to know, do we have exchange traded funds in Ghana and are they bonds? That's no, um, we do not have exchange traded bonds. We have um, corporate bonds listed on, this, on the, uh, the stock exchange. Yeah, okay, so yeah, exchange traded bonds. Yes, we have, um, we have, uh, uh, some bonds listed on the on the stock exchange that we trade in. Some are government bond, bonds. Some are uh, corporate corporate bonds also listed. Yes, so we trade those ones on the uh, Ghana fixed income market, which is a department of the Ghana stock exchange. Okay, thank you. Jessica is asking if you don't live in Ghana, how would you be able to buy bonds? Oh, it's Ghana? very easy. Yeah, it's very easy. You link up with us, we'll take you through our account opening process and we take it from there. So non people who are non-residents in Ghana are able to do those investments in Ghana and we, we have a vehicle for them. Okay, thank you very much. And um, okay, Big Boss is asking how much money is, is needed to start an investment in bonds in Ghana? Minimum of 1,000 Ghana cities, we can do investment in bonds. 1,000 Ghana cities, okay. Thank you. Opoku is asking, who are the other primary, okay, who are the primary issuers of bonds in Ghana? Primary issuers are um, appointed, okay, so if we talk about primary issuer, you know, the one who is um, asking for your money to use is, a, is an issuer. So that is the primary issuer. And we have institutions that help the issuer to structure the bond. So as the, the brokers, they, we have um, advisory institutions that are also able to do this. So when we say an issuer, the issuer is the one who is in demand of the money. So that they become the primary issuers of, of those instruments. Okay. So since there are primary issuers, I suppose there are secondary issuers as well. Okay, so this is where I have to explain. Now, the issuer is the originator of the transaction. They are in demand of the money. So that is where the primary market begins. So they issue the bond and the ones who have the money to buy the bond become the holders. So once those bonds are issued out and taken by the holders, then it becomes an issued bond. Now this issued bond is issued or is traded in that primary market where the issuer has issued the bonds, the buyers have taken it, that's the primary market. Where it trades in secondary hands, where it now begins to change hands from people who are now secondhand holders, then it becomes, it hits the secondary market. So we do not have people issuing new bonds at that level. So it's trading on the primary market and also trading in the secondary market. You, you get my point, yeah. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Um, Prince is asking, how easy is it to exit the bond market? And is the market liquid enough? Absolutely. Um, is the reason why we are happy that we have a secondary market. If it's only the primary market, 
after buying the bonds, then you are on your own. You have to go and look for a buyer where you need money and you want to exit. But the advantage we have is there's a secondary market, an active, a vibrant secondary market where we have people always looking for opportunities on the market. So once your selling price becomes attractive, you have people in the secondary market wait, waiting to buy. So it's highly liquid. Okay, thank you very much. We have a raised hand here from Frank. Frank, can you hear me? Yes, please, I can hear you. Okay, Frank, kindly ask your question. Thank you very much for this uh, presentation. My question is, suppose I have um, a bond with broker, uh, broker A, where I open my account and I have my CSD number. Can I use the same CSD number to buy a bond through another broker? Or I need to get a new CSD number through the new broker? All right, um, that's a fine question. Indeed, um, we all the, the investment accounts are uh, held by the central securities depository. And the central depository secretary is jointly owned by the stock exchange and the Bank of Ghana. So everybody who participates in these markets have their instruments um, you know, uh, deposited there. Now, with the, the brokerage houses become the conduits. So if you come to SIC brokerage and we have a, a depository account for you, and you want to move to broker B, the broker B will have to generate that. You will use the, your same ID you know, to do the transaction, but there must be a procedure you know, to move your account from broker A to broker B. But you, you don't have to have another depository account. It ends up uh, into the same depository account because uh, you, do, you don't necessarily have to have multiple accounts in the depository system. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. The, the last one is that, hey, suppose We are sorry, um, everyone gets to ask a question. We still have a lot of questions to go on with, so please bear with us. Um, we have a question from Godwin. Godwin is asking, what is the risk level associated with bonds? Okay, I think, um, he joined us a bit late, but um, we, we mentioned the risks. And so let me quickly go over um, those risks. We spoke about um, default risk. We spoke about interest rate risk, you know, and um, yeah, those are some of the risks. I can't go uh, beyond that. Okay, yeah, we, we understand. Time. All right, um, there's another question. How many years can one invest in bonds? Well, um, Is bonds, there a minimum and a maximum? Well, because we have a secondary market, we don't have a minimum, but um, in most cases, the longer, the better. So you can do it for a few months and exit. You can do it for one year, you can do it for two years, and you can hold the ball to its entirety. You can, you can hold it from day one, up to its maturity. Some could mature in three years, some could mature in five years, 10 years, and so on and so forth. But it all depends on you, the individual, and your investment profile. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Prince is asking, can you elaborate on secure and non-secure bonds? Well, um, if you say secure bonds and non-secure and unsecure bonds is relative because um, who, wants to invest in something that is not secure. But generally, we think that, um, you know, and some of these things comes when you do, you do the market analysis and your rating, because some bonds would have a higher security than, than the others. Go bonds that are issued by government of Ghana and government of Ghana guaranteed bonds tend to be um, bonds that are, are gradually more secure than uh, corporate bonds, for instance. So um, it depends on how you look at it. You could weigh one higher than the other. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, Abdul is asking, 
how do I know which bonds to buy? That's Your approaches, we advise you. Oh, okay. So you provide advisory services as well? Certainly. Okay, so viewers, um, I'd like to state again that SIC Brokerage Limited is our sponsor for today, and they are in charge of trading of bonds, stocks, and other financial instruments on the market. They are licensed to do so. So if you want to trade in bonds, you can contact SIC Brokerage. If you don't know which bonds to buy, like Mr. Ofori said, you can contact them and they will help you do that. Okay, another question. Um, I want to know between treasury bills and government bonds, which one would you advise that I invest in? That's a question from someone. Yeah, again, it depends on the person's uh, investment horizon. You know, treasury bills are, are, um, are short term traded instruments, they are not for the long term. But bonds are for long term. And I did say that the longer the better. So if you want to do investment for the short term, then again, it's better you do treasury bills. Because treasury bills could be for 90 days, 91 days, 182 days, and up to, let's say, one year. But bonds could be uh, for certain years up to uh, five years or even more. So the investment profile will tell us which one will recommend for you. So you can approach us and we'll have a discussion. Then we'll advise whether you should buy bonds and, or do short term the treasury bills. Thank you very much. Um, George is also asking, does SIC Brokerage have a branch in Kumasi and where is it located? We, you know, the mother company of SIC Brokerage is SIC Financial Services. And SIC Financial Services has a branch in Kumasi. So by extension, yes, SIC Brokerage has a branch there. Although um, we, we don't call it SIC Brokerage branch, but because our parent company has a branch there, we are able to um, help people through our parent company. Our, yeah, our parent company. So uh, you can assess our services through the branch. Okay. Do you know where the branch is located? Um, I, I do not have the address readily. Okay. But I suppose it can be found on the SIC website. Yes. Or even if you contact us on Monday, we'll, we'll help you out. Okay, sure. Thank you very much. Um, another question from Anne. Between mutual funds and bonds, which of the two is less risky? Okay. Um, if it's a mutual fund, you are mutually sharing the risk. And so, and again, it's, 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 you, you cannot compare apples or an apple to an orange. A mutual fund, you have money market uh, mutual fund and you have capital market mutual fund. You need to know the composition of your, your fund and what it is, is, is six out to do before you can compare it to bonds. So, there are instruments, there are different instruments. You can't really uh, compare them. You want you buy one depending on your investment objective. So I can't really say bonds are, high, are higher uh, in terms of risk or um, mutual funds are higher in terms of risk because some mutual funds even invest in bonds. And so you can't really compare the two and say, this one is riskier than the other when one could actually uh, invest in the other. Okay, thank you very much. Kevin wants to know, can an individual purchase bonds directly or do we always have to use a broker? You always have to use a broker because that's the work the brokers do. You cannot walk to the fixed income market and say they should sell some bonds to you. No, they will ask you to go and see a broker because you need to have an account in the central security depository for you to be able to buy the bonds. And you see, um, you can't just go there with cash and say you are buying. No, we settle the bond transactions through the central bank. That's the reason why you need to have um, a central security depository account with, uh, with us. That way you'll be able to buy, but it's not something an individual can do on his own. Okay. 
Nana, Nana has a question for you. He says that what accounts for the sometimes inverse relationship between interest rates and the price of the bond? Well, you know, um, one is in the two segments of the market, capital market and money market. They are, you know, they are not, um, they, are, they behave in opposite manner. If you, if the capital market, if rates are appreciating on the money market, capital markets tend to take the opposite direction. Same way, if rates are dropping on the money market, capital market returns appreciate or prices appreciate. By nature, that, that's how they behave. And the factors that cause those things are a lot. Yeah. Um, please, ca ca can you, friends, can you hear me? Yeah, so, Henry, I can yeah, hear I'm you. Henry, yeah, and I'm with Mr. Ofori. So, Mr. Okay. Ofori, what he's saying, I'm sure the guy, when he looks at uh, valuing a bond using uh, the way bonds are valued, you know, you receive cash flows in different periods of time, right? And so, money, 10 CDs, I'm sure you've heard it before, 10 CDs next year is not the same as 10 CDs today. Okay. Yeah. And so, obviously, if we have monies coming all those periods. You have to convert them to the value today. And so in bond, we discount it to today's value so that you look at it in today's terms. Okay. And that is why, because we are discounting it, if you are to value a bond on paper, I say a discounting is under the cash value, is your inverse relationship, you are reducing it. Thereby, whenever um, the, the lower part of the, uh, it's a fraction, the lower part is higher, it reduces the value. Do you understand me? And so therefore, yes. when the lower part interest rate or whatever is higher, it reduces the value. So just like what uh, Mr. Fury said, that's why the, the relationship, it's inverse. This one is in mathematical terms. So. Okay, so uh, that, that's, that's exactly what I've been trying to avoid. I want to speak in plain language for everybody on the call to uh, understand what we are doing. We want to demystify uh, what bonds are. So it makes it attractive for people. That's why the technical questions uh, try to make them simple. So if people want further information in technical terms, we can handle them um, later when they are, we are contacted. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ofori. Um, a question from Daniel. How do you get timely information on upcoming newborn issuances in Ghana? All right, so um, you should be listening to the, to the news and also uh, keep contact with us. When there are upcoming uh, bonds on the primary market, we can get that from us, even if it doesn't get it on the news. Okay. Um, unfortunately, today we would have to close a bit earlier than we do, or we've been doing for our previous webinars. So we'll probably take the last two questions and then we can conclude. So the first one is from Nane Fua. She's asking, what is the role of the CSD in bond purchases? And what is the main significance of the CSD number? OK, um, they, they play a significant role because um, the market is, is uh, completely automated. So we sit in our offices and trade when we do not host the accounts in our offices. The central securities depository hosts this account. So they ensure that all the bond purchases or the various instruments that are exchanging hands are moving. They ensure that the, those who are buying the bonds are receiving the instrument in their account. And the ones who are selling are also receiving the money in their account, in their bank accounts. And so that's the, the role. Of, of the central securities depository. So if they do not exist, then it means that uh, the market cannot function because it's not a market where we, we take cash and you know, exchange cash in our offices or, or over the counter. It goes through that system that they, they, they operate. So they are significant to the effective running of, of the whole market structure. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ofori. Um, our final question is 
directed to SIC brokerage. Person is asking, what's the difference between dealing with SIC brokerage and then dealing with other banks? And then will the consultation, I mean, giving the financial advice and which bonds to buy, will it come at a fee or will it be free? Well, um, for SIC brokerage, we are investment bankers and the banks, uh, some are commercial banks, some are uh, agri related banks, some are industry related banks. And, you know, so, and some also have uh, the features of um, what investment banks might want to do. They have units that perform those roles. But as being um, brokers, we investments or playing the intermediary role as far as investment is concerned is what we do. So we are experts in that. So dealing with us comes with a lot more advantages than going to the bank. The core um, function of the bank is banking and investment is investment. The banks could be doing some, but they only have a, a small unit you know, that are playing the role. But we are established to take care of people's investments. That is our calling. That is the training we have. That's our profession. So we are able to give better investment advice than what he will get from the bank. And you know, we don't charge anything extra for the advisory services that we, we uh, perform. If you are coming to us to buy bonds, we will not charge you anything extra from what the, 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 start, the market has you know, statutorily require us to, to charge. Where you, you want to, or you want us to help you to issue bonds or to raise money, you know, to run your business, it's a different ball game. That is where we charge you for those services. But normal buying and selling of, of bonds, where we have to offer some advice, you know, we don't charge anything extra for those services. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Ofori. And before we leave, I'll just still get people asking me what's the minimum they can invest in a bond. So if you can tell everyone for the very last time what the okay. minimum amount is. Yeah, um, minimum is, is 1,000 Ghana cities. 1,000 so, Ghana cities. Yes, I, I can repeat it again. 1,000 Ghana cities minimum. So if you have 1,000 Ghana cities lying somewhere in your savings account, and remember, Investment and savings are not the same. If you move the money out of your savings account and you buy bonds, you'll be receiving your coupon and then you can benefit from capital gains and you know you have better returns. But if it's in a savings account, it's not giving you any, any returns. It's, you are wasting the money. You are devaluing it actually. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Ofori, for this. Um, insights and education into how to trade bonds in Ghana. And before we end this meeting, I would just like to give out a few announcements. And this webinar is hosted by Invest in GH. And we are the leading provider of financial news and education in Ghana. So for those of you who join us late, you can visit our YouTube channel, Invest in GH, to watch this presentation there. You, you would also find some of our previous webinars there. You can watch. When you watch, please do all to like and subscribe to our channel so that whenever we go live, you'll be notified. This webinar is also sponsored by SIC Brokerage Limited. And SIC is an investment bank with over 25 years of experience in stockbroking and investment advisory. You can contact SIC Brokerage for sales and trading of your stocks, bonds, and treasury instruments. We'll make available the details of our speaker and SIC brokerage after the webinar. So for those who have not registered, please do want to visit our website, www.investinggh.info. Fill a very short form there and then register with an email address that we can contact you on. For those who have already registered, you would always receive correspondence from us. 
please check your spam if you don't get it in your regular mail. We also have WhatsApp groups that you can join. So we'll send some of the links to you after the webinar. You can also find the links on our website. Just click and then find which ones are available so that you can also join. Mr. Ofori, would like to say thank you very much for joining us. Before we leave, do you have any final words for us? Well, um, I will just advise that, um, you know, it's always a good thing to put some money aside when you are working and you are generating income. Because if you are in a rainy season, you want to um, do things right so that when there's dry season, you have things to, you have uh, water and food to live on. So what's working now, it's wise to be putting something aside. You do not need necessarily have to um, have a box and box to, to do investments. You have to, you could, you could start, you know, um, little and they say little drops of money makes a mighty ocean. So that is my advice that we put some money aside. You can contact us, we'll structure something for you. And over time, you see that you have amounted a lot of wealth for yourself. So I thank everybody who uh, was able to join us today and we hope to see them again some other time. Okay, so thank you all for coming. Um, you would hear from us in your emails. And then also for those of you in the WhatsApp groups we would always communicate with you. So thank you and have a good evening.